Hey, what's up guys? So we are going to be going over a tutorial as far as the overview on Duo Network after you've made your account. So you'll have to make a username and password, then it'll send you a link in your email, and then you just have to accept the link, and then you will be sent to this menu after you log in. So we're going to go through everything in order, uh, but it, everything is pretty self-explanatory, but you know, there are some new players that are jumping into it, so they don't really know what to do. So we'll get started with Dual Room. So when we go to the Dual Room, you'll see that there's all these options. There's Advanced Rated, Advanced Unrated, Traditional Unrated, and if you click on this little arrow right here, it'll go to unlimited unrated. Now, let's go over what advanced rated is. Advanced rated is basically the ladder system, and it's uh, the competitive scene where basically if you're going to a you know YCS or a regionals, you'd want to play in the advanced uh, rated or advanced unrated because uh, that will have the Konami uh, ban list. So that said, um, you'll notice I won't be able to click in any uh, at the moment, and I'll, I'll kind of explain why. So. Um, in Duel Network, you can play uh, full matches if you wish to, or you can just play singles. See, uh, when you host a duel, you have all these options. Now, you'll see that some of these uh, I can't click on, say, for example, traditional, because I'm running a deck that has uh, three cards, and um, you're only allowed to run one of them. So if you want to play, you know, uh, triple Sangue, you can definitely do that. You just play it in unlimited unrated. There's a lot of in crazy insane decks. Most of the stuff in there is FTK, and it's not really competitive. <laughs> but that said, um, you can also search for uh, a player. So if I was looking for a player that had, like, uh, let's say, uh, Shibo here. I can just type in Shibo, and I can find my friend. Maybe my friend's hosting a game. I was like, hey, Shibo, I want to join your game. I can just type that in, and we can play an advanced unrated. If you play an unrated, your um, your ranking and rating will not change, uh, but if you play an advanced uh, rated, which essentially is kind of like the, the ranked uh, matchmaking, if you want to call it that, uh, in this. But um, you can host a duel, and you can allow spectators to watch if you'd like, uh, you just by, by clicking in this box. You can make it so um, people have, have a password to join your game. Maybe you want to play a specific person or, you know, a friend. Uh, you can, you know, tell them the password to that. And what's awesome in Duel Network, you can also just watch duels, um, which is also very fun to do sometimes. Sometimes you want to watch, like, really high-rated players play, like, you know, this guy's 1300. You want to watch and see what the, the top decks are. You can definitely do that as well, which is awesome. And now that we kind of understand um, as far as what... Uh, settings are available for us to duel in. Let's go over um, rankings. Now, this is essentially the ladder in the game. It'll take a few seconds to load. There we go. And I'll show you like the top rated players. Now, um, as far as um, rating goes in here, uh, depending on who you play and um, what their uh, rating is, like if, if I only have 100 rating and I play someone that has um, 1800 rating, if I win, I'll g gain significantly more points in the ladder system. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of different uh, ways to sort the ladder. You can sort by rating, uh, you can sort by wins, and uh, actually I'm kind of curious to see how many, how many wins. 8,000, that's a lot. And then you can sort by experience, and then you can go by, um, by total XP. There's a whole bunch of different ways to sort the ladder. So. Um, at the moment, I just want to check out who's the top player again. Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu Guide and Sonic Boom. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. But that said, uh, let's go into the uh, other um, settings there. So there's also my profile. So we'll click on that. So this is uh, my account here. And you can actually change your avatar. So when you duel, which we will get into in a moment, uh, you can actually set your avatar and you can kind of have like a picture in the bottom. You can also change the, your... Um, your uh, deck, your sleeves essentially in Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, you can also donate to Duel Network and uh, you will be able to have custom avatars and custom sleeves. But uh, in order to get some of the avatars, you do have to unlock them. We'll go and I'll show you some of the ones that you have to unlock. Like, uh, like, like for example, Dark Magician Girl, you're, it requires 50 wins uh, on that account, and you can uh, have Dark Magician Girl as your portrait. And then you can type in anything you want. Like I just have, uh, hey, um, what's up guys? Like You can just say, hey, my name is blah, blah, blah. Uh, I like to play on Yu-Gi-Oh! My favorite deck is that. You can definitely do whatever you want. It's just kind of like a, a just like a, a short biography, if you want to, about y yourself. Um, and then um, next, we're going to go to the deck constructor here. So um, here you can see that I have Insectors. This is a really old um, deck profile. Uh, this is back when Insector, Hornet, and Dragonfly were both at three. So you'll notice that since uh, I had this deck as my default, I couldn't play in the traditional uh, rated um, or the uh, let's go. I'm sorry, advanced. Or I couldn't play in the traditional or the, any of the advanced because those make it so you can only play um, cards that are essentially if they're at one, you gotta play them at one. Traditional, however, has all the banned cards at one. So you'll see I can't select any of these. But if I select my deck like X Y Z Heroes. I can set from default right now, uh, which is awesome. This way, uh, whenever I go back um, into the duel room, it essentially will be XYZ Heroes. So uh, I can select and duel any of these players, and um, right on the left side is um, kind of like their um, 
the rank, if you want to call it that, like how many points you have like on the ladder, and then the number uh, after the, sl the slash is essentially how much EXP that they have, and that's pretty much just like for dueling. Um, definitely, you, you don't want to play players that have negative, like uh, like this guy has 365. You don't want to play any player that has like negative because that means that they probably don't know their rulings and they don't really finish their games and they just like uh, they just they're just players that like to cause problems. Like this guy's only got 22, but sometimes they people just make their accounts. Uh, at the moment, no one. I don't think that anyone really has negative like rep anymore. You can't really get that. I think most of those accounts have probably just got banned anyways. But yeah, that said. Uh, next up, we can go into profile view, which is basically the same. It just shows your uh, your username and your um, your uh, your win loss ratio and um, your rating slash XP. Like uh, on this account, uh, EXP. I I think you get XP for every duel that you finish, as long as it's in the advanced section. But um, every uh, format, it does reset the ladder, so keep that in mind as well. But it'll your XP will stay the same, and your win loss ratio will also stay the same. But yeah, this is my other account that I use, um, and then change password. That's that's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's my profile, and then um, profile viewer in profile. I, let me see if you can do it in my profile. Yeah, okay. So in a uh, profile viewer you can add people. So um, let's say I wanted to add a friend. So let's say I want to add myself. So I can add myself. And then I, I am now my own friend. And what's awesome with Dueling Network, you can check out the online users. Now there is also a public chat, which you can just, um, you know, you can just type in whatever you want. Um, although uh, I, I believe if you uh, use any curse words, you do get like a warning. So uh, trying to curse. And also I think caps locks, uh, people don't like caps locks unless like the, the card requires like, the card is like in capitals uh, I know that that was one of the rules in uh, Dueling Network you can check out the forum for like more rules but um, pretty much just uh, don't do anything that you know could get you banned like don't uh, flame people in the chat for playing a certain deck even though you know they might be playing Macro Rabbit and I don't know they think they're the best player ever because they play Macro Rabbit but yeah don't make fun of people in the uh, the public chat because I believe on the rules on uh, the terms of service something like that, it's like you're not supposed to like flame people and uh, you'll see that now um, my name is in blue so um, that means that that is my friend my friend is now online if I double click on uh, that oh okay you, you can't private chat with yourself apparently so if I click on any one of these uh, admins here the admins are in green so if you have a problem uh, in the mid uh, of your uh, duel, you can uh, double click on the people in green and you can say, I need a ruling help. Like right now I have a whole bunch of people PMing me and I'm sorry, I I'm just trying to make this video so I'm not gonna respond to you guys at the moment. But um, so yeah, you can just type uh, whatever you like to type. I'm not gonna like send this admin gibberish. You'd be like, what? Uh, but yeah, just be polite uh, to all the other players and I'm sure that they will most likely treat you with more uh, respect if when your opponent makes uh, you know a move that they can't do just say hey you can't make the move don't try to cuss them out uh, it just really won't solve anything and then so yeah you can see how many players are on right now and you can pretty much um, PM any of the players maybe you, maybe you want to uh, talk to someone else that you know like this guy's your friend maybe wing zero hero Yui is your friend you want to talk to him uh, you can definitely uh, do that and also um, when you do minimize it, it just goes to this private chat, and you can just double, uh, you just single click on that, and you can uh, you can just always check out the the public chat. Occasionally, I have to just check out just to see what people are talking about. Sometimes it's not Yu-Gi-Oh related at all. And then, so now that we kind of understand like a basic overview, uh, we're gonna go into uh, screenshots. So that that's something that I get requested uh, on as far as like how do I do screenshots? So let's say I make a deck profile. I, uh, my friend's like, hey, can you send me a, your deck profile? Um, I can click on this. Uh, icon right here. It's, it looks like a little camera button. You just click on it. It takes a few seconds and then it'll upload it and you'll see that it has this link right here. This is what you want to copy and paste to your friend and then you can send them that link and then they can see your entire doc profile. Now they won't be able to mouse over everything because it's just a image but um, yeah, they can pretty much just PM you if they're confused on anything. Also one thing I wanted to mention as far as the side deck um, because when you're when you're creating your deck, um, let's go over the deck uh, profile as far as like w when you when you're making a deck. So you can type in anything that you want as far as name. So if you want to like add tour guide, just type in tour. It'll add all. It'll search for anything that has the keyword tour in them. Like even though this isn't tour guide, it has the word tour in it, so it'll pop up. 
and maybe you're looking for uh, you're making like zombies. So you can just type in zombie in the description, and any card that says like you can special summon a zombie or something like Book of Life, for example, um, it doesn't have zombie in the uh, the name of the card, but in the description of the card it has something about zombies. So that's a great way to start building deck. Now, if you know exactly what card you're looking for, you can you know go monster spell trap, and then like let's say I want a monster, you can definitely narrow everything down. And uh, there's also these arrows here. You can click on the arrows, and that will allow you to essentially uh, go to the next page of the uh, the cards because it can only display so many at a time. And there's also this option right here. It says bypass card limit. So uh, that allows you to play it un in unlimited. So let's find uh, where's Mizuki? I know Mizuki's in here. Uh, Yeah, okay. Mizuki. So this card's at one, but look, I can add three. That will allow me to play in traditional unlimited. Now, I won't be able to play in uh, the advanced section when it, with three Mizukis. It's just not legal. But um, as far as your side deck, uh, you can definitely play like single games. You can play matches. Uh, just add cards. You just, to add cards, you don't, well, let's go over that. So you just drag and drop them. It's pretty simple. And if you want to get rid of them, you can just drag and drop like that. That also works. You can just drag them off the screen, and that's pretty awesome. Now, um, clearing deck will clear the deck, and I'll just make it so there's nothing. <laughs> But we're not going to do that, so we're going to go exit, and then we're going to hit no, so we don't want to save. And then we're going to go back to the deck current structure, uh, and then it'll just be back at normal. But if I did hit save, it would delete everything. And So basically, you can use this right here, and you can select any of your decks, like you can select junks. This is a really weird build, but uh, sometimes I experiment with random stuff uh, on this account. But uh, verse healer trope. Huh? Okay. Uh, like I have watts here. Um, all kinds of different things that you can do uh, as far as like when you make decks you can save them right here like let's say uh, if I put 39 cards in I won't be able to duel so keep that in mind you have to have at least 40 cards that is what's required and over here on um, you'll see that it says 40 that means there's 40 cards total right here right here the next uh, column is our the next uh, thing that's in yellow is going to be how many normal monsters and then the 16 is how many effect monsters blue is ritual uh, green is spell purple uh, purple or pinkish is the traps and then you have your side deck over here and then I just had hey don't, I guess I don't even want an extra deck this is probably made a long time ago but that said there's so many different things that you can experiment with as far as builds on Dillion Network. Just try things out from other people. Uh, you can look up like deck profiles and then you can kind of copy them and then you can change them up to where you like them. And next, let's go into the duel room because uh, unlike some of like the Yu-Gi-Oh games that maybe you've played before where it does everything automatic, in uh, this one, you essentially have to do everything manually. So we're going to go into the duel room and we are going to go and... Um, uh, oh, whoops. So I... Oh my, Okay, so this guy over here, he's, he's hosting a game, so we'll, I know his password, and then we have to go accept. And then um, first, in the very beginning, uh, like most Yu-Gi-Oh games, you, you guys play rock, paper, and scissors. So whoever wins uh, gets to decide who they go who goes first. And since I won, uh, you'll see how it's highlighted. Um, I like how first is light and second is dark, but uh, yeah, you can uh, decide which uh, if you want to go first or second. So you'll see it looks pretty awesome. Uh, I think that this looks really clean and nice, although this isn't, you know, uh, actually this hand's not bad. I have a e-call, and I can just go for like Stratos or something like that. But that said, you'll see that everything, uh, is, you have to do it manually. So you'll see right here, I can view the uh, extra deck at any time. And also, um, I can just start uh, milling cards. Let's say I play Light Sworn. At, during the end phase, I have to mill cards. Everything on Null Network is essentially manual, and it's a lot faster, and I actually kind of like that, uh, rather than, you know, when you have a face-down MST in the video games where it asks you every time if you want to activate it, and you're like, no, I don't want to activate it. Uh, I want to hold, like, B or A or whatever button it is uh, in the current video game uh, that you're playing. But let's say, like, Light Sworn, for example, I have to mill. So we can just mill cards like that, just by clicking mill. Let's say I activate something like emergency call, where I add a specific card. So I will click on my, I will, I will hover over my deck, and then I'll hit view. This will allow me to look uh, at my deck, and I get to add whatever e hero I'd like to add. So I'm going to go for something like Stratos. Now, to speed things up, this is what I really like about it, I can... For example, special summon, uh, some cards allow you to special summon from the deck, but just to make it faster, now this will help you out uh, if you're kind of just starting up the game, you can special summon Stratos. And then, uh, because everything is um, manual, so that means you, you can't just, like, it won't just add, it won't, like, give you a selection of cards to add, you would have to type in here, effect, okay. Um, effect, n F is short for effect, um, that's just, or you can just say F, I've, heard, I've had people just type in F, uh, like the, just the, just the giant capital F, and then they'll put a question mark, and that means is my effect okay? And then the other player, like 
oppressed people here, for example, is playing Lightsworn, he would say, okay, because he doesn't have uh, anything that he can respond with. Yeah, he could tactically maxi, but I don't think that'd be good maxi uh, just because of Stratos is summoned. But, um, so he will say, okay, and then I get to add my E hero. So uh, in this scenario, I would probably want to add um, Alias because I have Germany Spark. It just works well. And then you'll see that it shuffles my deck automatically. <laughs> now, some cards, for example, like Pot of Duality, you'll be like, well, how do I use Pot of Duality manually? So let's let's go to Pot of Duality. We'll add this to my hand. And then anytime when you add a card from your deck uh, to your hand, it'll automatically shuffle it. That's the animation uh, of the shuffling. So let's say I activate Pot of Duality. Now, Pot of Duality, um, it'll be interesting to... Uh, show you guys how to do this. So, since there's no way to like reveal, what you'll do is you'll just banish, this is banish top, this is banish face down. So, we'll just banish three cards. And my opponent can also click on the banish zone. So, we'll go to oppress people here, and we'll click on the, uh, the banish zone, and you can see what cards that he revealed. And then, um, you can be like, okay, I want to add, let's say, for example, um, Starlight Road, you want to add this to your hand. So, you add Starlight Road to your hand. And then with the remaining cards, you'll put these to the top deck. And then after they're at, uh, they're put back to the top deck, um, you you will want to shuffle. So um, we'll put this to the graveyard, and then we'll shuffle. And um, because it's the first turn, I can't enter my battle phase. So um, there's also like the phases right here. Uh, if there's a card that requires dice, you just click on the dice. It'll roll the dice for you. And if you have um, if you have the need to flip a coin, like uh, flip a coin, like second coin toss or something like that, anything, it'll actually say what the dice rolled on, so you can't really argue and be like, hey, no, no, that was a two. So you can use the uh, the chat here to your advantage. I like how this guy actually got in. <laughs> That's cool. Anyways, um, also as far as tokens, now tokens default special summon defense mode, uh, but y you can just move into attack mode. And as far as uh, attack, um, when you special summon, you can special summon defense mode, uh, you can send to the graveyard, like there's all these options. So we'll, I'll explain real quick what all these options are. The, uh, two ST is spell and trap. So cards like Crystal Beast, you know how they go from the uh, the field, they go uh, into the uh, the spell and trap zone. You just hit two ST, and that will special summon them, or put, it'll place them in the, uh, tr uh, the uh, zone that's the back row. And if you want to move it to the monster zone, you can just move it to the monster zone. And then uh, there's, uh, you can put it to the top deck, bottom deck, uh, to hand, uh, change control, we'll give it to my opponent. And um, notice now I'm able to click on that card. So see how it's highlighted? If I activated something like Gemini Spark, uh, and they're asking well, what, what card would I like to target. So let's say I have Alias on the board, I tribute this, I want to target and destroy Stratos instead of like his other back row. I would click on it and my opponent here would see that he, uh, he has uh, this blue box around it. That means he's targeting that card. So it kind of helps out with like Mystical Space Typhoon and all that good stuff. And you'll notice uh, this player, uh, the player that is in control of the card is the only one that can change control. Uh, for example, uh, oppressed people here can't just, he can click on it. Like let's say I use brain control or something like that and I want to take that card. Uh, again, I will see it, but I can't just take control over it. Um, also, if I activate something like Monster Reborn, I'm reborning from my opponent's graveyard, I can special summon it from my opponent's graveyard. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, also, I can banish. Maybe I'm using DD Crow or something. I can banish this. Um, that's definitely an option as well. Now, um, sometimes there are things like exchange, for example, where I couldn't give the, the card to my opponent. To, like, I can't add it to their hand, which is kind of something interesting. But realistically, most of the meta stuff like doesn't really play exchange anyways. But in the offense, that does happen. Um, you guys would just have to type it out, be like, okay, I know I have this, I want to activate your card, essentially. Uh, there are some things we're doing or can't do, like, for example, exchange is uh, an example of one of those. Okay, now, let's go over the phases after I end my turn. So I'm going to end my turn just for this video because uh, I will be able to show you exactly uh, like how the phases work. So, so it's this guy's turn. So uh, you'll see that as soon as the turn starts, because uh, the player in the red is going second, he'll get to draw a card. That's his draw phase card. So, um, Let's say uh, I, I have Alias for whatever reason, uh, and I want to attack with it. So uh, there's the draw phase. Um, you, you can use the phases. Um, usually, I mean, people don't usually use them because it's much faster. Uh, like I said, it's I like Dual Network because it, it's manual, so you can do everything much faster. But if you're at a tournament, it's always best to declare your phases. So uh, let's say standby phase, main phase one. Uh, let's say I want to, for whatever reason, I want to summon this. Uh, normal summon, <laughs> Necro Guard. So that, it'll just normal summon. If I special summon, you'll see that there's a different animation. So let's, let's look at the normal summon. So normal summon just places the card on the field. Now if I special summon Necro Gardner, uh, let's say I special summon defense. You'll see that little like uh, yellow uh, 
ring that kind of pops up. That means it's a special summon. So that's definitely what to use. And let's say I want to set this monster. So it's like I want to set Necrogarna, I just hit set, and then it'll put it face down. <coughs> Defense position, just like you would like normally. Um, now there is cards um, like uh, Silvery uh, Silver Sentinel, where like you place it, you you can place him in the spell trap zone. So I can go like that. I can place him there. I think Silver Sentinel um, has. Uh, I think he can be set in the uh, spell and trap zone face down. I hope. I hope you can do that. But yeah, like I said, there are some cards where uh, like it just doesn't really work properly uh, in doing that work. But hopefully in the future they will uh, fix some of those. Okay, now let's go over like the battle phase. So when I click on battle phase, whatever card I want to attack with, I'll, I'll uh, mouse over it. Then I can go to attack directly. Now some cards can attack directly. Like for example, um, Raging Flame Sprite can attack directly. Um, and I would just say, uh, you know, attack directly. And I'd be able to attack directly. Or if I want to attack the monster, I'd click on attack. Now you'll see this little sword over here. And you cannot attack yourself, <laughs> but uh, you can, you know, target your opponent's monster. So you just click on that. And it'll actually show you the direct line of what you're attacking. So that's pretty awesome. That way your opponent knows. Sometimes they'll be like, uh, what? Because, like, they weren't paying attention, and you can just do it again. And you can, uh, normally monsters can only attack once, but you can, you can click it as many times as you want. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of delay, so don't just click on it over and over, you're just going to cause more latency. So just click on it, if it doesn't work in three seconds, just click on it again, and then uh, you can, you know, do it again. Um, another thing, if I wanted to, let's say, um, for example, let's say that Necrogardner was a tuner. I know he's not, but let's just, for example. So let's say main phase two, um, I, I wouldn't be able to normally do this because I just set Necrogardner this turn, but let's say I, I normal summon Necrogardner uh, this turn. I'm going to move him to attack position because you can't normal summon in defense mode. So I'm going to normal summon Necrogardner and let's just, for the sake of this video, say he's a tuner. So I, I would say, okay, um, I would sink for a seven. So you'd say sink seven uh, and see how that card was my opponent's, it goes to their graveyard. So then uh, I would go to my extra deck, and then I would special summon, start as dragon, and then I would say effect or no effect. Again, just typing in F, and then um, let's say uh, I would be like no, and then I would let's say I happen to have an effect there. I don't, but let's just for example, uh, I have an effect there, and then obviously I, I could click on it, but technically there's only one card. Like I said, because it's manual, it makes everything much easier. Uh, whereas in the video games, even if there's only one card in the field. Uh, and you effect failure, it'll be like, which card do you want to effect failure? Well, it's like, well, I want to effect failure their only card. But like I said, uh, that's, that's just a reason why I like doing arc because everything is manual. Now, um, like let's say during the end phase, uh, let's say I was playing Light Sworn, and let's, let's for the sake of this video, let's special summon um, Lila. So, like I said in the very beginning of the video, Lila uh, has the effect to uh, mill cards at the end phase. So I would click on end phase, and I would go mill three. So one, two, and three. And because Wolf was... Um, uh, sent to the graveyard from the deck, uh, it can then be special summoned. So I'd go special summon, and I can choose attack or defense. So I click yeah, special summon attack, and it's special summon the wolf and attack. Now, if you want to overlay for exceed monsters, you just mouse over your card, go to overlay, and then it'll overlay for you, and then you select whatever card you want to overlay for, whether it be this, and like you can overlay defense, and then if you want to activate the effects of some XYZs, um, you can't overlay during the end phase, but let's just say for the sake of this video, we're doing it. Um, um, if, if this card gets banished, let's say that um, oh, you, you can you can banish these because uh, if macros on the field, um, X Y Z materials still get banished. But if you know um, D fish on the field, you can just go to detach. But let's say that they um, they they uh, de they destroy Gaga uh, Cowboy. Um, you instead of just detaching both of these uh, like this to make it much faster, uh, I'll show you what you can do. So oops, we're gonna go to overlay. Oops, we'll special summon all these monsters that we used, and uh, we will overlay, and then I'll just click on overlay again, and then let's say that uh, they destroy them, like they, they dark haul them. Instead of detaching all the material first, you can just say, go to grave, or if I go to banish here, let's say they, they uh, you know, Black Lives Soldier activate effect to banish, uh, the card is now banished, and then the material goes to the appropriate area. If, you know, they happen to banish this monster and macros out in the field, you would want to then uh, go over here and go banish, uh, banish, because uh, when macros out, everything goes to the banish zone. Um, I think that pretty much covers it, uh, but let's let's do this. Oh, we need to cover uh, when you attack. Okay, so let's say Wolf uh, attacks, um, wait, I'm going to end this turn. Uh, Okay, back to the uh, the player in the red turn. So again, during the draw phase, you draw. Now let's say you activated Reckless Greed. If you activate Reckless Greed, click where it says Auto Draw, and that means when your turn starts, it will not draw a card. And I'll I'll just show you real quick uh, that uh, after uh, this uh, this turn. 
So um, let's say I attack. So I go to battle phase and I attack into Stratos. And um, I am 300 over Stratos, so Stratos would then die, so I would send Stratos to the graveyard, and I would take 300 points of damage. So you'll have to type this in. You can also do this, you can type in slash sub, uh, sub 300. And that will also uh, subtract life. And let's say I want to add life. I can go slash add 100, and that will add 100 life. Or I can type it in here. Whatever you prefer is totally fine. You can use your numpad as well, which is awesome. Uh, I do prefer to use a numpad, and I always have a calculator on my side because I can't really do math very well. Um, but yeah, that pretty much covers the basics of it. But yeah, we'll turn off the auto draw real quick, and I'll just show you oh, what happens. So it's this guy's turn. So I will and turn, and then, okay, so let's say I activate Reckless Greed. I've unchecked the box where it says auto draw. So I click next turn, see, I didn't draw a card. And that's just the way you do it. Now there's also uh, things with, like Spirit Reaper when I, let's say I've, I, I attacked him directly. See, I can just click on the cards. That basically is uh, essentially picking the card at random. You can also shuffle your hand. So this button where it says shuffle, you shuffle your hand. Also, uh, if my opponent activates something like drag down, like I get, they, they get to see my hand, I can click show, and I'll say, are you sure you want to show your opponent your hand? And you'd say yes. And then, my opponent can then select the card, I can click on it, and then I will say, oh, he selected my mirror force. Okay, that goes to the graveyard. So, we're going to quit right here, because uh, that'll be Oh, so, when your opponent leaves, it'll just say your opponent quit the duel. Um, if they admit defeat, it'll say, like, you won the duel or something. It's, it's the same thing, though. But if you play in ranked, uh, you'll see that there's admit defeat, uh, offer draw, uh, call admin. Sometimes there's draws in the game, and then uh, if you click call admin, it'll just call an admin. You don't have to PM your admin, but sometimes um, if you know the admin, like I know some admins and like I just, cause, uh, cause I, I'm on Dueling Network all the time. So there are some admins that, you know, um, I know and they can just PM the guy real fast and be like, hey, this is the ruling. And then it's just much faster. But generally you want to click on call admin. Don't like PM them. Cause sometimes they get a lot of PMs. Uh, but um, that said, um, there's also like the watcher chat. I wonder if <laughs> I like how this guy's saying LOL. So yeah, you can you can type in the watcher chat. Uh, both players can type in the watcher chat. Um, when you are spectating though, you can't see uh, the uh, the both players' hand, but you can see the field. Uh, you won't be able to click on like the graveyard or anything like that, like I was showing earlier. Um, but if you um, emit defeat, like there'll be like a little animation sound, which is it's pretty cool when you win. It makes a different sound when you lose. But um, Let's just go back and uh, let's just go over it. I think that's pretty much it. Um, let's see. Is there anything else that we need to cover? I think that pretty much covers the basics of it. If you have any questions, let me know. Maybe I'll make it in a more advanced version. But there are so many things to cover in this. And I just wanted to give you guys a brief example because I had a lot of people ask me, how do I do this on doing artwork? Um, and that is just basic overview and I uh, hope you enjoy your stay at Newly Network, have some fun and uh, maybe I'll make one on YGO Pro in the future uh, but I have to like learn everything on YGO Pro but uh, I do like both of them, I think they're both very fun things and you'll see that there is an advertisement over here if you click on uh, you know one of their ads it'll support Newly Network uh, which I think is good. Also um, I think there is, if you go to Deck Constructor there's also like uh, if you math over the card, th this also uh, opens up a new window as far as advertisement. Um, I, I like that they don't put pop-up ads like in the game. I think that, that is good. Uh, but you know, I don't really mind ads um, because when you're checking out these prices and you get to check out the price, uh, it also does pretty much support your network because um, they are, um, you know, they, they got to host these servers and it costs someone money. And so, yeah. But that's basically the basic overview of Dueling Network. So I hope you have some fun uh, playing on Dueling Network. And uh, I'll put a link to Dueling Network if you're interested in doing, uh, you know, online. You and oh, by the way, this is all free uh, because I've had a lot of people say, how much is it a month to play Yu-Gi-Oh? And it, it's free on this one. I know that Konami has a one, but this one is much better. You don't have to pay for any of your cards. You have access to everything. And it looks very nice and it's pretty friendly. But yeah, again, if you have any uh, questions or as far as like how to do something, let me know in the comment section below and I might make a future advanced version of Welcome to the Dueling Network. But thanks for watching. Asian Eyes, signing out.